Brahms said, if music doesn't leave you long and it's useless. Because that's, that's, that's how we felt when we listened to good music, when we were kids. That's what we needed out of the music. That's what we got out of the music. And it was like magic spells. How could these people do things that make us sleepless, that are so beautiful, that make us long for other worlds and other places? And it's a longing that gives you energy, that gives you, makes you do things better. And sometimes we achieve that on our concerts. It's our goal, it's what we try, it's what we aim for. And then we can go and sleep well, right? And be happy about what we do. They play hundreds of shows a year, from big time festivals like Merlefest to small intimate stages like the Ash County Arts Center. But wherever they're playing, the Kruger brothers, Uwe, Jens, and bassist Joel Landsberg bring a sense of discovery to their music and invite their listeners to join them on their remarkable journey. And it's been quite a ride. Uwe and his younger brother, Jens, grew up in Switzerland as the children of German immigrants. My mom was a kindergarten teacher, and both my mom and my dad, they both played the accordion and guitars and harmonicas, and my mom had like a song for every everything that we did. We would sing in the evenings together, and what she would do is she would then sing the second, you know, the, the, the harmony to it, and Uwe would then sing the harmony while she would sing, you know, with Uwe together, while I would then sing the, maybe the lead. And then we could sing in three-part harmonies together. And that was already when we were five, six, seven years old. And since I was the older brother for me, it was always clear that I would play the guitar. I always wanted to play the banjo since I was about seven, eight years old. Once we started playing, that was it. I mean, you couldn't interest it for us for anything else, really. Those happy years as a small, close-knit family were not to last. Margareta Kruger died young and their father's second marriage crumbled. By the time the Kruger brothers were in their teens, they were essentially on their own. And then in 1979, in November, uh, we left home, just the two of us, and, uh, and never to return. And then we, we, we started playing on the streets. It, it was it was an adventure. I mean, I was like 18. Jens was like 16, 17 years old, and it was it, it was incredible. We it saw was, Europe. I mean, it was it was you know, and completely, freedom. completely detached yes, from everything from from home, school, society, anything. It's just like completely free, like a bird. The relation between playing together and seeing what's happening when we play and look at the faces of people and see that we also had these discussions with Doc Watson because he played also on the streets. And he always said if he would not have done that, he would not have been able to do what he was doing later. And we feel also very much like that. Meanwhile, here in the United States, Joel Landsberg was embarking on his own musical journey. In fifth grade, in elementary school in New York, the Suzuki method was very popular and everybody played violin. So, you know, everybody was doing the whole Suzuki method thing and then, First day of junior high school, which was seventh grade in the New York City system, I joined the orchestra and went to the orchestra class. And the teacher, Mr. Goldberg, bless his heart, stood in front of the room and said, okay, who wants to play violin? And of course, everybody's hand shot up because we all came from the elementary school, so we all played Suzuki violin. And he looks at this room full of kids with their hands up and he says, you know, this would be a very, very sad orchestra if all of you only played violin. There are so many other wonderful instruments available, like the bass. And he just pointed over to the corner of my head, looked, and something went click, and my hand shot up, and I just said, I'm there. And from that moment on, there was no turning back. I was 11 years old and playing bass. After several years performing all over Europe, Jens and Uwe separated. Jens focused primarily on bluegrass and the banjo, and ultimately went to America. Uwe went country. I started out by learning 50 Johnny Cash songs and 50, 50 songs by Hank Williams. And so, you know, I made myself a catalog and just learned all these songs. And so we, we, we played everywhere in Switzerland. I, mean, I knew all these little bars and it was, it, was, it was an incredible time for me. Back in America, Jens played with his boyhood idol, Bill Monroe. I didn't have a suit to play at the Grand Ole Opry, so 
I I found one, you know, in Bill Monroe's closet, you know, of one of his old. I think it was one of his bus drivers suits, you know, that I that I wore for the for the show. But he was really nice to me, and he also told me. He said to me, "You, you have your own music. Don't play bluegrass necessarily because." You know, you're from a different culture, a different country. You have to find your own music. And then when, if you find that, come back. Jens and Uwe finally reunited and formed a band called the Appalachian Barn Orchestra. They soon met Joel, who was also performing in Europe. Coming from New York City, though, I was never really confronted with bluegrass, per se, or roots, American, yeah, American roots music. Folk, yeah, roots American music. folk music. And we would rehearse forever we would play hours and hours and hours and you know because of these hundreds of instrumentals literally and songs that he never heard or knew we never told him the title we just let him play along to it i said you just have to intuitively know them and then i went to the point where i would you know show on yeah we'd his... be driving to the gig and i'd be driving or something and he'd be sitting behind me or next <laughs> to me and he'd he'd take his hand and he'd go all right what song is this and he would play it with, the, with my hands, you know, on his on his back. And I'd had to recognize from the pattern of his fingers what song it was. Uh, so I was pretty good at it for a <laughs> while. <laughs> Although the Kruger brothers were no strangers to the music of Doc Watson, that meeting in 1977 changed their lives. Here at the Sugar Grove Festival, a festival created in Doc's honor, the Kruger brothers are among old friends and precious memories. Fish is jumping, and the cotton is high. That inspired us to come to this country. We really wanted to meet Doc Watson. Uwe said once, you know, we really, you know, we saw him play once he came to Zurich with T. Michael and Merle, and they played there. And then was the advertisement for Merle Fest, and Uwe, Uwe, Uwe came, I, we got together, and Uwe said, you see, this is where I want to be. I said, where is this? He said, in Wilkesboro, North Carolina. <laughs> and I said, yeah, why would we ever play there? <laughs> and, and you see, and Uwe said, you just wait, you know, we're going to get there someday. And, and one day we got the letter to, to go and, and, and play there. And we got to meet Doc backstage. And I remember, you know, for two strangers, foreigners, he shook Uwe's hands and he said, so you, you play the guitar and you're the singer and oh, that's beautiful. And he was just as nice as it could be. Doc was always so supportive of us and, and what we did. And there really was just such a wonderful friendship that developed over the years. It wasn't about how well we played or how good it sounded. It was just about about the songs and the joy we had about the songs and the instrumentals and and sharing that sentiment again it was it yeah. was like sitting yeah. at home with our parents yes yeah. it's, it's, it's it was the same feeling completely again completely you know, normal just a different language but the same humanity now for 30 years i sang the songs doc could talk to me and the things that he would sing about i never dreamed i'd see but in the hills of Carolina, folks have opened up the door. And for the first time in my life, I'm not a stranger anymore. At one point we decided either we go to America or we let it be. People here in Wilkesboro were so helpful because, you know, I remember that day when Jens called me and said, we need to buy some land, we need to, we're going to move here. People really wanted us to be here. I've seen sunsets on the ocean. I've seen the desert blue, drove the endless highways beneath the prairie moon. When they're not on the road, Uwe, Jens, and Joel settle into their lives in Wilkes County. Jens works on his original compositions. You can find Uwe at Main Street Music and Loan, meeting old friends <laughs> and trying out vintage guitars. Daddy's getting deep on blue. And Joel serves as an EMT for the Wilkes County Rescue Squad. You know, the folks here in, in North Carolina, the folks in Wilkes County especially, have given us so much and made life so wonderful for us that, you know, yes, through our music, that's how ultimately we really give back to the people. But I enjoy being able to go out and help my brother fireman 
when when it really hits the fan and when they're really in bad shape that I can go and I can do something and I can help save a life. It's it's an amazing, amazing feeling. And we're proud of it to do so. Yeah. The future's meant to be And the choices you recall Were no choices after all There's no reason to despair For there's always Life on the road has so many special moments. Here, at the International Bluegrass Music Expo in Raleigh, Jens meets a young fan, who is quite a musician in her own right. I love Jens Kruger. He's one of my banjo heroes, and to play with him is just the best day of my life, honestly. <laughs> and later that day, Jens wins the Steve Martin Award for Banjo Excellence. It says in the paper, North Carolina banjo player wins prize. <laughs> yes, North Carolina banjo player. <laughs> not Swiss, not German, not immigrant. North Carolina, that's cool. I feel like, yes, I'm home here. It, that means a lot to me to be accepted as being home. We have never lived in a place where we were citizens and or able to vote. But to be accepted as one of theirs, great. So you see, this is America. <laughs> There's a little Jewish boy from New York sitting here playing the bass. We got a Wilkes County boy playing the drums. We got two German boys who grew up in Switzerland and moved over here to Wilkes County. And we have Gene from Chicago, I from Tokyo, Francis from South Africa. South Africa and, and Dimitri from Russia. And we all play music together. <laughs> For us, this is America. Peace, peace, peace. Our, mother, our mother, had, mother had a good saying. She said, For everything you take in, you gotta pay. And for everything you give out, you get some. You know, so music is really a trade. You know, if we could say in one sentence, or what is really the base of what we do, is if we could leave people after a, a show with a little bit more hope and a little bit more energy, a little bit more encouragement for their own life, then we're perfectly happy. It's like, who said that? You know, the, the, every life ends, but the good ones with a gift, right? Picture in my mind I see I think about it all Is the color of the leaves In Carolina In the fall The Cooper Brothers members of the Western Piedmont Symphony.